Wow, what is the difference between people who have lived on the struggle bus their entire lives and people who seem like everything is effortless and easy financially? One word, one word, and that word is offers. Because one of the things that I discovered recently is wealth creation is actually offer creation. And I want to share with you some secrets today of offer mastery wealth. Everything that you have in your life, you have everything because you or somebody who was responsible for you either made an offer or accepted someone else's offer. Everything. You're married. Your spouse made you an offer or you made them an offer and they accepted your offer. That's how you got married, right? Um, you have, you have um, a house because they offered the house on the market. And then probably you offered them a counter offer and then they offered you a counter offer and then you offered them another counter offer and then finally all came to agreements, okay, let's accept each other's offers. And so if indeed everything that you have, by the way, good, bad, or otherwise, generally speaking, the, a lot of the a lot of the good things that we have in our lives we have because we created an offer that was acceptable to us. We offered, it, we offered it to somebody, they accepted our offer, and our life is better. Oftentimes, the things that feel like they're missing in our lives are missing because we failed to make someone else an offer, but somebody made us an offer for less than our desired standard, and we accepted that offer anyway because something is better than nothing. Is that real? Is that real talk? And so what we've got to do, if, if I'm making accepting offers anyway, doesn't it stand to reason to be more hyper-intentional about the offers that I make and the offers that I take? Because some offers are good offers, they just ain't me offers, right? They're good, but they ain't good for me. I, um, I have people who like invite me to do things. I, I had a, a, a guy who called me on the phone and said, Myron, hey, we'd like for you to come out and speak at this big conference in another, country, another city across the um, country. And I'm like, okay. They said, what are your requirements? And I told him my requirements. My requirements are $250,000. $250,000 to speak for an hour? It's an offer. I'm not holding the gun to their head. I'm just saying that's my requirement. You don't have to pay me the $250,000, but I don't have to come. Right? Right? So it's $250,000, and you have to pay my private jet fee, which is 11000 an hour. It's going to be five hours there, five hours back, so I'll be another hundred and ten. So $355,000, I'm there. Okay, I don't think they're going to accept that, but I'll get back with you. Okay. They didn't accept it. Guess what? I'm so cool with that, I don't want to fool with that. They, did, they said no. We ain't paying you $250,000 and $11,000 an hour to fly your jet. We ain't doing that. Okay, I'm going to stay home and play with my grandbaby. Because that, that's bet, way better pay than $355,000. No, I'll just stay home. Cool, right? And so what you have to do, though, but here's the problem. Here's the problem you have. Somebody comes to you and asks you what your requirements are, and you don't have an answer. You do not have a tangible, measurable, predetermined answer that's based on your standard. And so what you do is you say, oh, just make me an offer. Because you're, and here's why you say that, because you desire to do the thing more than you desire to have a standard. But if you have a standard by which you do a thing and you don't capitulate to go below that standard, now you can live a life by design instead of a life by default. Isn't that better? And so what I've got to do is I've got to get to the place in my life where I'm willing to tell people what my standard is and be okay when they say no. Are you okay when they say no? Like, <laughs> learn to sell without compulsion. Your life will be so much more fun. Like, what do I mean compulsion? Like, when you're not trying to get somebody to buy. Yeah, buy my thing. No, but if you knew what was good for you, you'd buy my thing. No, they do know what's good for them. That's why they said no. <laughs> they know what's good for them. They, you, you, what, you're, what you really mean is if they knew what was good for me, they'd say yes. But see, see, like, 
get to the place in your life where the machine or an individual can't beat you to death with a carrot and a stick. I have a standard. Art Williams, I was in A.L. Williams. Art Williams started the company that became Primerica later. It was called A.L. Williams. And one of the things he used to say that was so confusing to me when I was in my 20s, it makes perfect sense to me now. He said, life will give you what you'll fight for or life will give you what you accept, right? Like, well, which one is it? Is it going to give me what I fight for or what I accept? Yes. Life will give you what you'll fight for or life will give you what you accept. And so you, either you have a standard or you will operate based on somebody else's standard. And so the question you have to ask yourself is, what is my standard? Nobody can pick that for you. I remember back when I used to charge $5,000 an hour for coaching, which was probably, this was six years ago, $5,000 an hour, which that sounds like a lot, right? Doesn't that sound like, a, I mean, to some people it sounds like a lot, okay? Maybe some of you on YouTube, that sounds like a lot. I used to charge $5,000 an hour for coaching. And I had a guy who's one of my coaching clients. He bought one of my, he bought one of my trainings. He went through the training. And it was a training on how to sell from stage, right? So when you're doing a live event, this is how you sell from stage. He went and did a live event. He did a million dollars in sales in a day. He was like, that was amazing. We get on a Zoom call. He's like, dude, do you have any other like trainings on, like do you have a training on how to tell stories? Like do you have one-on-one -on -one coaching? Yeah, one-on-one -on -one coaching. How much is it? 5000 an hour. He's like, great, I just PayPal'd you $40,000. I want eight hours. And then I thought, why did I make my coaching $5,000 an hour? And he's a great guy. I, like, I was glad to do the coaching because he paid me. But I thought, this price is too low. I don't want to be anchored to somebody for eight hours for $40,000. And I know that sounds crazy. That's not my point. I know that sounds crazy. Forget the number. You have a number. Your number's different than mine, but mine's different than yours. Everybody has a number, right? But to me... Before somebody bought eight hours at one chunk, $5,000 an hour sounded okay. As soon as somebody bought eight hours in one chunk, I was done. Literally, when we got off that call, I raised the price to $25,000 an hour. And I know that sounds crazy, but guess what it is? It's an offer. It's not like your money or your life, like your money or your life, right? It's an offer. They can tell me yes or tell me no, but tell me now, I got to go. And see, you don't have an offer. You don't, you don't have a predetermined offer based on your standards for your desired outcomes to produce the life by design instead of the life by default. And that's why your life isn't where you'd like it to be because you haven't figured out a path to get there that's paved with offers. Is what I'm saying making sense? Okay. So fast forward. I raised it to 25,000 an hour. Then I was selling $200,000 VIP days for, um, I was selling $200,000 VIP days for, well, $200,000, like a VIP day. You can want to spend eight hours with me, it's, well, eight times 250, I mean, eight, 200,000, eight times 25,000. Okay, that, that math makes sense. But then, when I raised the price of my VIP day to 350,000, I'm just, I'm telling you how my brain like conceives of these offers. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just helping you understand what's going on in Myron's mind palace or mind playground, whatever you want to call it, right? This is what's going on in here. I'm, I said, okay, so when I raised my price of the VIP day from 200,000 to 350,000, well, 25,000 an hour doesn't make sense anymore, right? Because now they're going to spend eight hours with me for, for a VIP day for $350,000, well, if, what if they just want to buy one hour at a time? Now they could do it for $200,000, get a hundred. Well, I'm not doing that. So I raised the price to $40,000 an hour. I'm, I'm, I'm literally just telling you how I came up with this and why I did it, right? Because it, all of it has to make sense. Like when you put the calculator to it, math is always going to math. And we want the math to end up telling the truth. We don't want the, want the math to end up telling a lie, right? So I raised my hourly rate because I raised the price of my VIP day. And it all had to match. So I know what you're thinking, but my 40,000 an hour times eight hours, that's only 32,000. I mean, 320,000, it's not 350,000. But they also get interviewed on my, on my YouTube channel 
right? They also get to travel with me on private jets to fly and watch me do my thing. And so there's, there's some other perks. It's called VIP Day Plus. So they get some pluses, right? Um, and so my point is, like, I have to have a, an offer strategy for creating, conveying, and converting these offers. I promise you, if you have less money than you desire to have in your life right now, it's because you've not yet create, conceived, created, communicated and conveyed an offer that people are willing to say yes to. And maybe the reason you haven't done that is because you don't know what an offer is. And by the way, when you first start making offers, you're not gonna be a master of making offers. It's gonna feel weird, odd, uncomfortable, you're gonna feel out of sorts, but the thing that will make you comfortable faster than anything else, decide before you start making offers that you're going to make offers for the practice of making offers so you can get better at making offers. I'm not making offers hoping people say yes to them. Like just make the offer just for the practice. I don't care if anybody says no. I'm gonna practice this 100 times and if nobody says yes, I'm okay with that. Why do I say if you practice it 100 times and be okay, like making off, like, in fact, if you write a book and you offer 10 people your book, one of them will buy it. If the book was written right for them and not because you wanted to tell your story that nobody, wants, nobody cares about, right? So, um, but you, when you write a book, write a book that solves somebody else's problem. And maybe it solves an entertainment problem and it's a novel. Maybe it solves an educational problem. Maybe it's all, and it's, it's teaching them how to do something they didn't know how to do. Maybe it's solving an enterprise problem and it's fixing something in their business. But when you write a book, solve somebody else's problem. Make your everything that you create about somebody other than you. Because why? Because wealth is your ability to create value for someone other than yourself. The wealth that you will receive in your life is going to be in direct proportion to your ability to create value for someone other than you. People who make a lot of money they're not all virtuous people, but they've all figured out a way to create something that a big pool of people values. Are y'all tracking? And so, so, let me give you the definition of an offer. Let's start there. Because when you master offers, when you master making offers, conceiving them, creating them, communicating them, and conveying them, and converting offers, when you master those steps, you will, it's going to be hard for you not to be rich. You may not be Bill Gates rich, but you're going to be so rich people in your family are going to be like, how do you do that? Right? So, what is an offer? An offer is the opportunity. It's the, it's the what, what's that word I just used? By the way, what does the opportunity mean? That means they get a choice, right? It's the opportunity you give a potential client to buy, it's the opportunity you give a potential client to buy. Oh, okay, an offer. The opportunity you give a potential client to buy or otherwise obtain, because all offers aren't, people, people don't pay for all offers with money. Some people pay for offers with assets or money. Other people pay for offers with their attention, right? Like people, like people thank me on YouTube all the time. Thank you for giving it this, 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 us for free. I'm going to break some bad news to you. It ain't free. You are paying with your attention. And while you're paying attention to me right now, you ain't paying attention to nothing else and nobody else. So you are paying. And so it's the opportunity you give a potential client to buy or otherwise obtain the thing or the things that you've helped them realize they've desired all along at a price that you previously decided on and they've subsequently agreed to, which they now expect to use to make their experience of life exponentially better. Now, I know that's a big old word salad definition, but all of those components are necessary. The opportunity you give a potential client to buy or otherwise obtain the thing or the things you've helped them realize they've desired all along. Here's the critical component. At a price that you previously decided on, and they've subsequently agreed to, which they now expect to use to make their experience of life exponentially better. That's an offer. Because it's only gonna make their life a little better. Why would they buy yours? They'd go find somebody else who's gonna make their life exponentially better. And 
for those of you who didn't get that, you can go back and watch the video later. Watch it seven times. Okay, cool. So that's an offer. When you get good at making offers, by the way, we have an internal resistance to making offers. Do you know why? Because we feel like when somebody says no to our offer, we feel like they're rejecting us. It has nothing to do with you. It ain't about you, boo. It ain't about you. When somebody says no to your offer, they're just saying this offer is not for me, at least not now. And that's okay. That's okay. In fact, it's better than okay. Like, if you can convert, if you, like, if you, get, if you have a funnel or a website and you get like 100 people to come to that website and you got an offer that's $97 and two people buy it, one person buys it. <laughs> Baby, celebrate all the way to the bank. Just send more people. Are y'all tracking? Yeah. So that's, that's the definition of an offer. But your offer mastery is going to determine your wealth. Okay, what's the definition for mastery? Mastery is the ability to execute effortlessly without the use of conscious resources. I'm going to say it again. Mastery is the ability to execute effortlessly without the use of conscious resources. Can I share something with y'all that's mind-blowing to me, even though I've been living it for quite some time? Okay, first of all, be, before I share that, how many of y'all have on shoes with laces? How many of y'all tied your shoes this morning? How many of you tied them, but you don't remember tying them? Like, I don't remember tying I know I tied them because I'm looking down and they tied. I don't remember doing it. You know why? Because I've mastered tying my shoes. It doesn't require conscious resources. I can tie my shoes unconsciously. Like I can be having a conversation with my wife and I can be looking in a different direction. I tie my shoes and don't miss a beat. What if I told you that you can get so good at making offers that it will eventually become as effortless as tying your shoes? Ah. There are people in the world who are as good at making offers as they are at tying their shoes. And there's no angst in making offers for them. I know, because I is one of them. I am not worried about whether or not people are going to say yes to my offer. And I'm not not worried about it because I know who's going to say yes and who's going to say no. I just know somebody going to say yes, somebody going to say no, and it's going to be all right. Okay, let me, before I even go any further, let me give you this. I have this belief. Could be true. Maybe. Maybe true for me, for sure. Maybe also for you. Here it is. If it's for me, no one can keep it from me. If it's for me, no one can keep it from me. And if it's not for me, Nobody can get it to me. And if they could, I wouldn't want it anyway. Boy, doesn't that remove a lot of pressure? Like, I don't have to try to make anything happen anymore. All I have to do is work on me getting better at the inputs because I know the outputs will take care of themselves. See, here's what people have told you your whole life. If it's not working, try harder. Okay. That sounds like really good advice, except it's terrible. What's not working isn't working, so do more of that. <laughs> How many of y'all track? That, does, that doesn't make any sense. Here's the scientific formula for transformation. If you don't like the output, change the input. I'm telling you, financially, the ultimate input on the front end of your wealth journey is offers. And if you're not making as much money as you'd like to make, it's because you're not making enough offers to enough people. And if you are making offers and people like, and nobody's saying yes, because that's how I was when I first got started in sales. Like I made offer after offer after offer after offer after offer after offer after offer. And I did that from October of 1985 to April of 1987. And everybody said no. And guess what I could have concluded? Offers don't work. 
but they don't work. I tried them for a year and a half. They don't work. But they were working. They just weren't working for me yet. They were working on me. See, work, work is a two-sided coin. They were working on me and turning me into the person for whom they could work. And see, you're, a part of all of our struggles in life is we desire the outcomes of, the, of our endeavors before we deserve them. Real talk. We have to go through the growth phases, all of the growth phases, to become the person who deserves to stay there when we get there. That's what has to happen if you're going to stay there when you get there. So mastery is the ability to execute effortlessly without the use of conscious resources. There are four types of offers. When you master them, congratulations, you have a very successful business. You have to master lead generation offers. You have to master giving people the opportunity to give you their information because they want to consume more of your content. You have to master core product offers. Like one of our core product offers is this book, From the Trash Man to the Cash Man. We sell eight to $12,000 of this every month. Now, eight to $12,000, believe it or not, yeah, well, 12,000, maybe not 8,000, but $12,000 a month is more than enough for me to pay for everything in my personal life. And I've got two fairly expensive car payments. And then the rest of my cars are paid for. Okay, this book right here, this book right here, thirty to seventy thousand dollars a month. It's a core product offer. Like these are core product offers. Master lead generation offers. Master core product offers. Your first core product could be twenty dollars. Your next one could be two hundred. Your next one could be two thousand. Those are all core product offers, right? And either you don't have the offer, or you've not sent enough traffic to the offer to figure out whether or not it converts, or how many, pieces, how, many, how many people have to see it in order for that to convert. You just haven't sent enough traffic. Once you have a conversion, now you know what your numbers are. So you have two things you can do, send more traffic and improve conversions. And then you have premium value offers. You, you need to like really obsess, take, take a couple of months if you need to, and really obsess over a really big problem that somebody has who has really deep pockets. And then just start making that offer to everybody in that category. Somebody's going to take it. I have, look, I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you from my experience. I have, like, I have a $27,000 coaching program that has almost 200 people in it. I have a $55,000 coaching program that has over 100 people in it. I have a $350,000 a year. All of these are per year. I have a $350,000, no, the $27,000 is not per year, but the other ones are per year. I have a $350,000 per year coaching program that has 10 people in it. I have a million dollar a year coaching program that has three people in it. Why am I telling you that? I'm telling you that if I can have those, you can have a $5,000 offer. You can have a $10,000 offer if you obsess over solving somebody else's problem. I'm obsessed over solving these people's problems. And now they pay me. Like, and it does, you don't have to do it as a coach. You can do it as a cook. You can do it as a carpenter. You can do it as a plumber. You can do it as an electrician. You can do it as a mechanic. Just solve the problems that people have. Obsess over their problems, not yours. If you obsess over solving somebody else's problems, they will pay you enough to solve yours. That's real talk. So, fortunately for you, I've created an event. It is the last public event facing event that I will ever do, that I host. I'm not doing it anymore. You say, Myron, why are you not doing it anymore? I don't like it. I don't like the minutia of it. I'm just keeping it real. I'm being very transparent. I don't like all of the back and forth conversations with hotels and production companies and these people and those people and the next. I hate it. It's not fun for me. I like doing things that are fun for me. I'm 62. I've helped a lot of people. I've earned the right to do things that I like to do. And so, this is the last one. It's next month. I ain't doing it again. I promise you. I, people say, that's what you say now. No, if I say it now, you pretty much take it to the bank. I'm through. Now, when I'm doing it, I love it. 
It's not the event itself I don't like. I love the event. I love the people. It's all the minutiae you got to, all the minutiae hoops you got to jump through in order to do it. I'm not doing it anymore. Okay. So if you desire to attend that event, hopefully I'll have an opportunity to meet you. You're watching this on YouTube right now. You want to learn more about making offers? I'm going to have some of my clients there who I've taught to make offers. And they're going to be teaching you about offers they've made. I'm going to be teaching you about offers I've made. I've invited two of my best, most favorite business authors to come and speak at that event. Daniel Priestley, who wrote Oversubscribed, which is one of the best business books on selling premium value offers, or any offer for that matter, but especially premium value offers ever. Like, you want to develop the mindset that Daniel Priestley has in his books. So, um, Daniel's going to be speaking. Dr. Benjamin Hardy, 10x is easier than 2x. You know, everybody loves to use the phrase 10x this, 10x that, 100x this, 100x that. But the reality is, most people who talk about that stuff, like people talk about the kingdom, business, blah, 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 and they're just using it as a catchphrase. Dr. Ben Hardy's 10x is easier than 2x is not a catchphrase. He's literally breaking down the psychological and scientific formulas that make 10x results easier to produce than 2x results. And he shows you step by step how to do it. It's not theory, right? He's going to be speaking. So Offer Mastery Live is going to change the game. And you're going to learn how to that. You're, like, you're going to get in the offer game. And you're going to get on the road to Offer Mastery. It'll change your life for the rest of your life. I'm looking forward to seeing you at Offer Mastery Live. And if you don't learn how to make offers there, learn how to make offers somewhere. Go somewhere. Like, you went all the way through elementary school. They didn't teach you nothing about offers. <laughs> Junior high, no offers. Senior high, no offers. College, business degree, still didn't teach you about offers. Like, what the world? People will go to law school for three years to get, a, a, like, a law degree. Then they got to pass the bar. And all of that, they learn about how to practice law. They learn not one hour about how to make offers to get people to say yes to your law firm. It, I don't, it doesn't matter if you're in real estate, if you're in insurance, if you're a lawyer, if you're a doctor, if you're an engineer, if you're a plumber. It doesn't matter what business you own. If you own a business, you owe it to yourself and everybody on your team who sells stuff, which is everybody on your team, whether you know it or not, to be at Offer Mastery Live or at least somewhere. It doesn't have to be Offer Mastery Live. Go somewhere else, but learn how to make offers. It'll change your life. I'm done. We'll see you in the next video.